If you have a sweet tooth, you are gonna love these recipes. And don't worry, they're all easy to make and they'll be perfect for the holiday. Hey y'all, I'm Valerie and welcome to my kitchen. In today's video, I'm sharing six Easter dessert recipes that you are gonna love. Okay y'all, let's get started. This cookie cake is so good. I make them all year long, but I think it would be perfect to make for Easter. I'm starting out in a medium sized bowl. You're gonna add in two cups plus two tablespoons of all purpose flour. Also, half a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of baking soda, and one tablespoon of cornstarch. Now whisk until combined. Now set that aside for just a minute while we work on the wet ingredients. In a large bowl, I added one cup of brown sugar and half a cup of granulated sugar. You're also gonna add one and a half sticks of melted butter. I did melt that and then I let it cool for just a bit. Next, add two teaspoons of vanilla and one tablespoon of corn syrup. And that corn syrup just gives it more of a chewier texture. We like it more cookie-like, chewy cookie-like, rather than cake-like. I'm also adding one egg and one egg yolk. Okay, you can do this by hand or you can do like me and use your mixer. You just wanna give them a good mix before we add in the dry ingredients. Now you can go ahead and add in that flour mixture. You can do it a little at a time or do like me and just dump it all in. Now you don't wanna over mix it, mix it until just combined. Now it's time to add in the chocolate chips and you can really use any combination you want, but somebody got into the chocolate chips here, so I had to use a little bit of everything. I usually do one and a half cups of semi-sweet chocolate chips, but use any combination you like, and I just folded those in. I use an 11 inch baking pan for this. I always line it with full and I grease it. The full helps to lift it out after it's done. And now you're just gonna pour in that cookie dough. By the way, if you're enjoying this video so far, I would really appreciate it if you would give me a thumbs up. It really does help out my channel. Okay, after you get it all in there, just press it out into an even layer and it will be thin. Now you can top this with anything you like. I had some Easter M&Ms, so I added those. And I also found some Easter sprinkles at Walmart and these were super cute, so I added those on too. And that's what's fun about making a cookie cake. You can change up the decorations for birthdays or holidays or anything you like. And after you get it all decorated just the way you like it, you're gonna bake it at 350 for 15 to 18 minutes. You'll notice the sides will start to get golden brown. The center may not look done, but it is. If you leave it in there until the center looks done, Trust me, you'll end up overcooking it. And I wanted to show y'all how I decorate these. I made up a basic buttercream frosting. I separated it into three bowls and colored each one a different color. I love doing this. I put each one, each color in its own popping bag. And then I put those three down into a large popping bag. You have to make sure you get them all down in there evenly. They don't have to go all the way to that tip though. Once you start squeezing, you will be able to see all three colors in the little swirl. And y'all, I didn't do nothing fancy here. I just did some little swirls. I love making this cookie cake for the kids. I'll be making it again for Sunday. Have y'all ever had a cookie cake from the Great American Cookie? That's what this one is kind of like. And I always use my 11 inch pan for this. I've never tried it, but I'm pretty sure you could do this with a nine by 13. I might have to try that out. You don't have to cut this like a pizza. I did it mainly for video purposes, but you can cut it into squares. It looks cute like this though. All I got to say is it's delicious. The kids love it, but the adults love it too. It's dense and chewy, just the way we like it. And I'm pretty sure you'll like it too.
This grape salad may sound strange, but just trust me, it is so good. And I'm telling you, you are definitely going to need a large bowl for this. I'm starting out by adding in one and a half blocks of softened cream cheese. If you forget to set it out though, just pop it in the microwave for just a few seconds. You're also going to add in an eight ounce container of sour cream. I know it sounds weird, but just stay with me here. Next, add in half a cup of granulated sugar and a teaspoon of vanilla. Now you're just gonna mix this until it's smooth and creamy and well combined. And now for the grapes. I use two pounds of green grapes and two pounds of red grapes. You can use all green though if you prefer. You'll just need four pounds. Now I'm adding half a cup of chopped pecans. Now you're gonna stir all that together until all of those grapes are completely covered in that cream cheese mixture. After I get it well combined, I cover it and place it in the refrigerator to chill until I'm ready to serve it. You have to let me know, have you ever had a grape salad? I love ambrosia salad too. Okay, when you're ready to serve this, we're gonna make up a quick topping for it. You can serve it in anything you like. I'm using this pretty little dish my Mima gave me. It's a seven by 11, but you can also use a punch bowl for this or even a trifle dish. In a small bowl, I mix together about a half of a cup of chopped pecans along with half a cup of brown sugar. You're just gonna stir that together and sprinkle it evenly over the top. And I'm telling you, you can't skip the topping. It is so good. This would also be good to make in the springtime or in the summertime. You can make it for parties or cookouts. By the way, I am so ready for the warmer weather. How about y'all? I love the springtime. If I had a choice, I would keep it spring weather all year long. This carrot poke cake was a new favorite. I'm starting out in a large bowl. I added in one box of carrot cake mix, and you're just gonna make this cake according to the directions on the back of the box. My favorite cake mix is Duncan Hines, but I can't find a carrot cake in Duncan Hines anywhere in my area. Oh, and a spice cake would work in here too. Now I'm just making this up according to those box instructions. I add in an extra egg though, and I do like to add milk instead of water, but we were almost out of milk, so I just went with the water. Next, you're gonna add in an eight ounce can of pineapple and make sure you drain it very well. We're just doctoring this cake up a little bit. I also added about a half a cup of sweetened shredded coconut and about a half a cup of chopped pecans. I didn't feel like chopping those, so I put them in a Ziploc bag and beat them with my rolling pin. Now you're just gonna mix this until it's well combined. I'm using a nine by 13 for this and you do wanna spray it with nonstick spray. It looks like I got a little carried away there. That can was almost empty and I was trying to get out as much as I could. After you get it all in there, just spread it out then you're gonna put this in the oven and bake it according to the directions on the back of the box or until a toothpick inserted comes out clean. By the way, if you're new, I would really love to have you here. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. That way you get notified of all my future videos. When that's done, I do let it cool for just a few minutes. Then I set it to the side so I can start on the cheesecake mixture. And to make that in a large bowl, I added two of the small boxes of instant cheesecake pudding mix. They're 3.4 ounce boxes. You're also going to add four cups of milk. And I like to add that milk a little at a time. If you add it all at one time, it'll just make a huge mess. And you don't have to mix this until it's completely thickened. You're just wanting to mix it until it's well combined. We're going to poke holes in the cake. So we still want this mixture liquidy enough to where it'll sink down in them. Oh, and while I'm thinking about it, I've had several of you ask me about my mixer. It's a KitchenAid. I love it. It is cordless, 
and I will have it linked in my Amazon storefront. You'll find that in my description box below. After you get all that mixed together, you're going to grab the cake and find anything you have to poke holes all in the top of that cake. I'm using my mixer attachment, but you can also use the end of a wooden spoon. And I'm telling you, the more holes you poke, the better. Okay, y'all, you're about to see something funny. I did something not so bright. <laughs> this was a lot of pudding mixture, and I just dumped it all in. I should have added it a little at a time, but you see what happened. I overflowed big time. I made a huge mess, but oh well, it happens. I could not believe I did that. And after I cleaned up my big mess, I covered it with plastic wrap and placed it in the refrigerator to chill for about two hours. Or you can leave it in there until you're ready to serve it. Then whenever you're ready to serve it, just take it out of the refrigerator, uncover it, and you're gonna pour over eight ounces of whipped topping. And after you get it on there, it's easier to use an offset spatula to spread it out. Okay, after you get that done, if you want to, you can crush up some graham crackers and sprinkle those over the top. But I thought it would be super cute to put some coconut in a Ziploc bag and color it orange. So that's what I did. And I just used a tiny bit of food coloring to do that. This carrot poke cake was out of this world good. It was delicious. And the pineapple, coconut, and pecans in it just took it to a whole nother level. And even though I did make a big mess making this, it was easy to make and it was so good. It was totally worth it. And if you're like me and have to have something carrot cake-like for Easter, this would be perfect. I thought an Easter trifle would be super cute. The recipe I followed was meant for a chocolate trifle, but I changed it up to make it for Easter. I used a strawberry cake and I baked it according to the directions on the back of the box. You do want to let it completely cool and then you can start on the pudding mixture. In a large bowl, I added one and a half cups of milk and one large box of instant vanilla pudding. Now you're gonna mix this until it's well combined and completely thickened. After that, you're gonna fold in eight ounces of thawed Cool Whip topping. By the way, you can change up the flavors of the cake or the pudding in this. I just used that strawberry cake for the pink color, but you could also do a white cake mix and just color it pink. Or you may not wanna do it pink, just do it whatever you like. And you do want to fold this together, that way it stays light and fluffy. By the way, after that cake was cool, I did cut it into small cubes. I picked out three different colors so I could color the pudding and have each layer of pudding a different color. I used the Wilton colors, but you could also use just regular food coloring. I just divided that pudding into three separate bowls and then colored each one a different color. And now it's time to assemble. I've got my trifle ball here, and first I'm just putting down a thin layer of cake. Well, not really a thin, thin layer, but you wanna have enough room to do all the different layers in here. I just made sure to completely cover the bottom. And over that cake, I'm spreading over one of those colors of the pudding mixture. It was kinda hard to spread out there, I thought at first I might need to double the pudding mixture, but I think if I doubled it, it would be way too much. And over the top of that, I crushed up some vanilla sandwich cookies, but you could use any cookie you like here. And just sprinkle on a thin layer, it just adds a little crunch to it. Now we're going to repeat that whole process two more times. Cake layer pudding mixture, cookie crumbs, and you'll be at the top before you know it. I loved making this because it was so fun to decorate. So what's your favorite Easter dessert? We usually have a little bit of everything. Okay, after I filled up that trifle dish, I had to add on some of the peep bunnies. And I'm telling you, I had so much fun with this. 
And if you have trouble getting them to stand up like I was, I'm sure you could always just pop in a toothpick in the bottom. And of course, I had to make some edible grass. I just colored some coconut green and added that on. Then I got some of the Easter robin eggs and placed them around the bunnies. This turned out absolutely adorable. Not to mention it was delicious. And I'm pretty sure if you have this on your Easter table, everyone is going to go crazy over it. I do have to say though, some of those bunny eyes looked a little crazy, <laughs> but it was still so cute. This Watergate salad is one of my Meemaw's favorites. I'm starting out in a large bowl. You're going to add in one 20 ounce can of crushed pineapple and you do not want to drain this. I'm also adding one small box of instant pistachio pudding. Next, you're going to add in a half a cup of chopped pecans. Now just mix this until it's very well combined. Okay, after you get that all mixed up, you're going to add in about one to two cups of mini marshmallows. And to finish it off, an 8 ounce container of thawed whip topping. Have y'all ever had a Watergate salad? This was the first time for me and I loved it. Now you're just going to fold all that together until it's all well combined. And this is it. You can place it in the refrigerator to chill for a few hours until you're ready to serve it. And to make it look pretty, I sprinkled over some chopped pecans. And a Watergate salad is not complete without some maraschino cherries. If you wanted to, you could even cut up some maraschino cherries and add it into that mixture. I've just always seen them added to the top. We loved this. And I'm telling you, if you like pistachio pudding, you're going to love this one. This Easter dirt cake is an Easter must make. To get started, you'll need a 9x13 baking dish. You'll need a package of Oreos, and I put them in my blender and blended them into fine crumbs. Then you're going to take those crumbs and sprinkle two-thirds of them into the bottom of that dish. Now the recipe said to pack these down into the bottom of that dish, but I didn't think they would hold together well, so I added in a few tablespoons of melted butter. Just mix them together until it resembles kind of like wet sand. Then you're going to press them down kind of good there into the bottom of that dish. Now we're going to set that aside while we make the filling. In a large bowl, I'm adding an 8 ounce block of softened cream cheese. You're also going to add one stick of softened butter. The recipe says to use unsalted, but I only buy salted, so that's what I used. I also added in one cup of powdered sugar. And I forgot the Cool Whip here, you'll see in a little bit. You're just going to mix this until it's smooth and creamy. You don't want any lumps left from that cream cheese. In a separate bowl, I added three cups of milk. I just used 2%. And I also added two small boxes of the instant chocolate pudding. But if you wanted to, you could also use vanilla here. I've had it that way and it is really good too. Also add in a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Now mix this until it's well combined and that pudding has thickened. Now to that chocolate pudding, you're going to add in that cream cheese, butter and sugar mixture. Now mix it until it's combined. And remember I told y'all I forgot to add the Cool Whip. I was supposed to add that to the cream cheese, butter, and sugar mixture earlier. After I got those three fold, uh, mixed together, I was supposed to fold the Cool Whip in, but I completely forgot. And I know somebody's probably going to give me a hard time about it, but look, I am not perfect. I just love to cook, so I just do my best. And I'm telling y'all, things don't always turn out like I want them to, but it's all about having fun. By the way, that was eight ounces of whipped topping that I folded in there. Then you're going to take that mixture and pour it right on top of those cookie crumbs. 
and y'all know the drill, <laughs> spread it out into an even layer. And now it is almost time to decorate, but first you're gonna sprinkle those remaining cookie crumbs over the top. And after you get them on there, you're just gonna spread them out to completely cover everything. And y'all, I was so upset with myself after I did this and got it ready to decorate. I had to run do something, so I cut my camera off and I forgot to cut it back on. But I had so much fun decorating it. I just wish I would've recorded me decorating it. I just placed on some of those bunny peeps and I had reserved a tiny bit of that pudding mixture to put under the bunnies just so they would stand up better. I sprinkled some green sanding sugar around them to look like grass kind of, but you could really get creative with this. We love it and it is so cute. And feel free to change out the chocolate pudding for vanilla or any flavor you like. You could even do lemon pudding with lemon Oreos that would be delicious. I do want to say I love you all and I wish you a very blessed and happy Easter. I really hope you enjoyed this video. You may also like these. Don't forget to subscribe down below for more easy recipes and I will see you in the next one. I got some side dish recipes. <laughs> I should do a disclaimer. These are sweet and they're full of sugar. <laughs> if you were on a diet, go to the next video. Yeah, if you're on a diet, you're in the wrong video. Well, is she gonna come in? Cause I'm gonna say, come on down, Mima. Yeah, somebody said I need grammar lessons. I need a grammar tell coach. Me. Tell me, uh, I don't need no grammar coach. My grammar's bad because it's just how we talk. Guess who's here? <gasps> it's Mima. Come on, hurry up. Say, come on down, Mima. <laughs> come on, Mima. <laughs> this is my Mima. Oh, I look horrible. No, you don't. Oh, hello. <laughs> This is my baby doll. I'm the first baby. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. And I'm the shortest baby, too. I'm the shortest one out of all of them. And I'm the oldest. What, what was we at? We're going to get me one of those clapping things. And action. And then I got to do it again. Cheese. And this is what I do. <laughs> Mima, I brought the pictures. <laughs> Look at my bangs. Oh goodness, that's scary. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, I got the bonnet on. Oh, Me and my favorite. sister. 